the threat of an asteroid hitting Earth is very real. If it's big enough, it's also very final. These are very, very infrequent events. The probability is not zero, though. A blinding flash of light streaking across the sky. About 100 tons of space rock falls on Earth every day. Most of it is so small it burns up in our atmosphere or lands unnoticed away from major populations. No human in the past thousand years is known to have been killed by a meteorite. And according to NASA, no large object is likely to strike the Earth any time in the next several hundred years. However, one thing is certain. We haven't found them all. There are thousands out there, and we don't know where they are. There are a lot of asteroids in our solar system. They number in the billions. Scientists all over the world are working toward detecting and deflecting the most catastrophic of natural disasters. The race is on to find as many of these objects as we can. We have a way of calculating whether or not an asteroid is potentially dangerous or not. I mean, I think it's something worth investing in. <laughs> it's our existence at stake, right? Amy, let's get this one out of the way. It's probably the question you get asked the most, but how scared should we be? Asteroids and comets are a natural hazard that's out there like a lot of other natural hazards. Uh, these are very, very infrequent events, these collision events where, where an object actually impacts the Earth. The most important thing that we need to know about asteroids is you know, when the next impact is gonna happen and how bad it will be. What we know is that an object that's about say a kilometer across, is capable of causing very, very wide devastation across the planet, really, truly global devastation. The object that wiped out the dinosaurs was somewhere in the neighborhood of five to 10 kilometers across, so even bigger than that. At a kilometer, it's still gonna be very uh, bad and it will have global effects. For objects that are capable of causing what I would call sort of regional damage, kind of a large major metropolitan area, a city and its surrounding environments, sort of around 100-ish meters, it depends on the details of the composition and so forth. By the 1980s, NASA was cataloguing near-Earth objects. In 1994, stargazers watched as comet Shoemaker-Levy 9 hit Jupiter. The resulting zone of chaos was estimated to be as large as the Earth, and the event became a turning point in the search for asteroids and comets in our solar system. In 1998, Congress tasked NASA with finding 90% of asteroids and comets one kilometer wide or larger. Soon after, Hollywood blockbusters Armageddon and Deep Impact brought attention and fear to the masses. The great news is that the vast majority, more than 90% of all the really large one kilometer near Earth objects have been found. The challenge now is working down to these smaller sizes that are still quite capable of causing a lot of damage, uh, but they're just harder to spot because they're fainter, they're smaller. Can you give us a sense of how many are out there in our solar system? We know that there are a lot of asteroids in our solar system. They number in the billions. Most of them, however, are between uh, Mars and Jupiter in what we call the main asteroid belt. This is a region of space where most of the asteroids in the inner part of our, our solar system live, and they stay there for many billions of years. There is another population, though, that kind of leaks inward and gets into the region somewhat close to the Earth, and we call these near-Earth objects. We think that there are millions and millions of near-Earth objects that are out there in the total population. As of today, we know of sort of around 20, 25,000, something like that. When we first spot an object, we, we really know very little about it. We just see something moving across the sky. So all you get is just sort of a handful of snapshots, just enough to be able to tell that this isn't an asteroid that we've already seen before. And then once we can calculate the distance to it, we can now start to make predictions about its true size. Is it large or is it small? So we have a lot of information that we have to get pretty quickly to really understand what's going on. Finding asteroids is just one piece of the puzzle. Planetary scientists are extremely skilled in determining the orbits and speeds of asteroids based on relatively small amounts of data. 
NASA runs simulations of the trajectories asteroids could take, which is useful but time consuming. A team of scientists in the Netherlands have found a way that could buy us more time. Our method is very quick. So you can very quickly get an assessment of whether or not the object is dangerous or not. If you look at the classical way of determining the danger of an asteroid, it may take you know, days of computing time on very big machines to, uh, to determine this, this uh, hazardousness. The current problem is that there's just too many asteroids out there to uh, spend a huge amount of uh, computational power on all of them. So the neural network allows us to focus on what really could go and uh, pose a hazard to Earth. A neural network is a computing system that mimics the way the human brain operates to find underlying relationships in a set of data. By training the network in this way, you, you train it in recognizing those objects that are most likely to hit the planet. And once it's trained, you can apply this network to all the unknown asteroids and then you can make a selection and saying, hey, this is, these are the ones which appear to be having orbits similar to the ones which we know are hitting the planet. That doesn't mean that they do, but it, does, it only means that they look very similar to the ones we, we know they do. What else did you find? Should we be particularly concerned about anything? One thing that we did find is that um, our neural network was able to go and... Um, identify a handful of asteroids which weren't considered potentially hazardous that uh, when we went and integrated them forward in time, they came uh, quite close to Earth. We find a handful which were not detected before or not considered being dangerous before and we think they are potentially dangerous. It's very hard to simulate kind of going forward in time an asteroid that's going to hit Earth because, well, the Earth is really small and uh, while well, space is really big, and then you have to have very exact parameters to shoot an asteroid that goes and hits exactly Earth. And then Simon had the ingenious idea of not even trying to do that and just launching the asteroids from Earth's surface and integrating backwards in time. It's very hard to make it hit. So you need a lot of, need a lot of calculations which all end up in nothing. And the idea was then like, well, let's not do that. This is basically what NASA is doing. NASA is taking an asteroid, making multiple copies of them, shooting them all forwards in time, calculating their orbits, and then see what fraction sort of gets close to Earth. Not even hitting Earth, but getting close to Earth. And then they call it a potential impactor. So you calculate the solar system forwards in time for let's say a thousand years. And then you launch asteroids from the surface as if they, if you go forwards in time would fall on the surface. You calculate them backwards to today, and then you get your orbital parameters of today's asteroids, which you know will land on the planet. And those you can use as known impactors and compare with all the other asteroids in the, in the solar system. Can simulations and, and AI, can those things fill in the gaps where perhaps telescopes and, and other imaging tools can't? Absolutely, since the observations get more complex, uh, the physics gets more complex and if the physics get more complex the mathematics becomes more complex and at some point you can't solve your problems analytically anymore and then this is where the computer comes in now we have this trained neural network we have a way of calculating in a fraction of a second whether or not an asteroid is potentially dangerous or not and therefore deserves more attention or or more time to spend on uh, for for really finding out if it is dangerous when it comes to hunting asteroids Time is critical. What we can do about a potentially hazardous object depends a great deal on what we know about it and how much time we have before the encounter. We'd really like to find them when they're decades away. Because the more time you have, the more options you have. And the less energy it takes to, to move an object aside. It also means we might not have to resort to launching a nuclear warhead at an asteroid. Until recently, pretty much our only choice. That's an option of last resort, in my opinion, yes. We have lots of options available. You can just simply bump into the object and just nudge it out of the way. That's one possibility, and that's kind of, in a way, sort of the simplest thing to think about, just nudging it off its path a little bit with, you know, a massive object, a spacecraft, let's say. It's just kind of like bowling, if you will. You know, if you have a long time or a long stretch of, of runway in the lane, just a very small twist on the on the bowling ball will make a big change in where it ultimately ends up. Another option it would be something where you take a very big, big, massive spacecraft and you park it next to the object and you use the force of gravity 
as a towing rig. That takes longer though, and you need to be able to send a pretty massive spacecraft, and it obviously depends a lot on how big the asteroid is. Other options start to get more and more complicated, and uh, they range from painting one side of the object a white color and painting the other side dark and then letting the pressure of light sort of perturb its orbit. In a departure from the lab and computer simulations, NASA has real plans to rehearse kinetic impact deflection. In 2021, the agency will launch DART, the Double Asteroid Redirection Test Mission, which will intercept a 160-metre asteroid in 2022. Better to practice now before we have to deal with an actual threat. In the meantime, discovering asteroids is our best bet. Thousands of scientists and amateur astronomers around the world make up an informal network that survey the heavens. But that may not be enough. NASA wants more resources to map our solar system and better technology. We need to ramp up our network of sensors and also uh, we need to just continue to strengthen our, our network of international observers so that we can get follow-up uh, because we find these objects when they're distributed all over the night sky. Once we get more observations, we get better data, we can make better predictions. If you look at the big impactors we have had in the last, let's say, 20 years or maybe 30 years or 50 years, most of them we haven't seen coming. So the danger, the real danger, I think, comes from the objects we don't know about and not from the objects we do know about. This particular natural disaster, like a lot of natural disasters and like climate change, is a problem of the global commons. Uh, so the thing that we risk collectively is that it sort of then becomes nobody's problem and nobody takes ownership over it. The asteroids are all over the sky. They just truly cross boundaries and borders with a second's notice. I kind of imagine in the future, maybe lots of small satellites around the Earth that are always going and looking outward. I mean, I think it's something worth investing in. <laughs> it's our existence at stake, right?